Welcome back to Hack 5 from DEF CON 26 2018, here with none other than my favorite maker of all times, Glitch. Dude, Glitch, it is so good to have you back on the program. Yeah, I'm happy to be back. Uh, a lot has changed since you were last on the program, but to recap quickly for those that missed that epic episode on drone shenanigans, what is this beast in front of me? Okay, so this is uh, Project Cuckoo here, and it's a little bit angry, but uh, it's basically a drone that I wanted to put a pineapple on and make it a, uh, a video game gadget or a movie gadget. It's a Wi-Fi hacking drone. Right, and I see the Wi-Fi pineapple is actually integrated into the frame. Last we had you on, we were talking about how you actually 3D printed this case, and you can go and get the STLs and make one of these uh, your own, and I've clearly upset <laughs> the, the, the gimbal there. We're good, it's this uh -huh. hard. But, uh, but it's so cool that you can just, out of nothing, mm -hmm. but like a spool of plastic, of plastic make everything. Like right, yep. and then integrating the Wi-Fi pineapple. So, uh, real quick, for those that might not be aware, what was the inspiration behind Project Cuckoo? Uh, Watch Dogs 2, primarily. Uh, there's a Wi-Fi hacking drone in there, and I wanted to bring that to life. Uh, people have put pineapples on drones before, uh, but what I wanted was something that looks sleek, something that looks like it fits in a movie or a video game. Something that 007 himself might use, perhaps. Exactly. See, art imitates life, imitates art. It's just cyclical and it's beautiful. Uh, I was talking to Dualcore the other day. I mean, Dualcore was in Watch Dogs mm -hmm. 2. The Wi-Fi Pineapple is in Watch Dogs 2. It's so weird. And here we are with like bandanas and stuff as an homage to that, which was an homage, homage to, to us the real in the first place. So, yeah. yeah, I love that cyclical nature of it. And, and this is another beautiful example. So. Um, go and stop and watch that video if you haven't already seen it. Now tell me, what have been the upgrades since then? Okay, so last time I was using an analog video system. It works, but uh, I wanted something that was a bit more capable. What's the limitations of an analog video system and, and what are the components of that? So, uh, normally you got your uh, camera that goes directly to a video transmitter and then that gets plumbed back to a receiver on the ground. Now that's uh, one way, normally 5.8 gigahertz. Uh, it's really limited in... Um, Quality, uh, effectively it's like 640 by 480. Yeah. Uh, you get static readily. Uh, no forward error correction, no fancy stuff. So I wanted to go to a digital system because I wanted very high resolution or at least much higher resolution. So if you're not familiar with the FPV world, uh, these analog video systems are predominantly what people use in the FPV racing arena yep. with these quadcopters and these, uh, FP, you know, these drones. Um, and you'll, st you'll strap on a pair of video goggles and the, the image is crap, but at least the latency is low. Yep. And, and, now, and you'll get static the same way if you grew up in the 80s or 90s and had a terrestrial television, you may remember static. Kids these days, I like give them the goggles and they're like, it's fuzzy and they can't actually describe what static is because they've never seen it. There are digital systems on the market. They're like expensive. DJI's Light Bridge, right? And they are heavy and they are big and a lot of them aren't readily packable, they aren't readily integrated into DIY projects. And someone came up with something called Drone Bridge, which is based on Wi-Fi broadcast, which we briefly covered in the last episode. Uh, and it is a, it uses Wi-Fi cards okay. to transmit video packets. It's not using Wi-Fi in the traditional access point client configuration. It's doing it in a manner that it's using them as digital radios, packet radios, back right. and forth. So. Off the shelf speaking, yep. uh, your trade off is quality, uh, like bad quality analog, but low latency versus high latency digital, great quality. So. And heavy. So you've at least taken heavy out of the equation here since yes. you can use off the shelf Wi Fi equipment. Latency is un it's about 100 milliseconds, which is, that's from glass to glass, lens to screen. So if you tried to FPV race this through, through a, a forest of trees, yeah. But it's plenty for your brain under normal flight conditions to say, hey, there's nothing too strange about it. It's not like a full second delay where you move the stick and then it moves. Yeah. It's about one to one, but uh, you wouldn't want to, ra want to race on it. I remember doing an Oculus Rift demo before mm -hmm. Facebook bought them uh, back at, uh, oh, yeah. at CES years ago when they were first just like they were college was students. Like 150 milliseconds of lag or something. Just and you just your head. Enough. And it was enough to make you feel like, oh, yep. but not enough to like, I mean, at least me, I didn't want to just puke everywhere. So that's, that's This good. is just under that critical threshold. 150 to 175 milliseconds is about where you get that disconnect. This is just a bit better than that. So um, how does this improve, you said one of the limitations of those analog systems is range. How does this improve the range? So you get things like forward error correction, and that just basically means it fixes packets before they're broken. 
so you get less corruption and whatnot. Normally with Wi-Fi, you're li limited to, well, relatively short ranges, and then it disassociates entirely. With this, you can get, uh, this setup could probably do about two to four kilometers, depending on conditions. Nice. Uh, which is comparable to maybe a 600, 800 milliwatt uh, Five point gigahertz analog system. So it's a two way system. Yes, this that's another big difference here. Uh, FPV is you'll have your FPV transmitter on the drone and a receiver on the ground. Then you'll have your radio on the ground that talks to a receiver on the drone. And if you have telemetry on top of that, that's two more radios. Right. This, but in this, but but traditionally yeah. the video is just fed to you, and if you don't happen to get the video signal, the drone doesn't know that you're not receiving. It. Right. So this can talk back and forth. It can figure. It can negotiate bandwidth. Uh, it can oh. lower its bandwidth when you get towards the end of your range. You so get, it's sort of like on my phone if I'm watching a YouTube video right. and I drop from LTE to 3G yep. and suddenly my internet connection isn't as good, but it's okay because the video in real time yep. adapts to just give me a lower exactly. quality exactly. You know, 480p or, or, or 360p video. Whereas Wi-Fi, if you were just running Wi-Fi and you got to your edge of your range and you were doing 50% pack of loss, be, nope, this connection's not good, drop. Right. So. so there are many other, now you mentioned that there are many other radios in addition mm -hmm. to that. I'm curious, one, what is the radio that you're using for the video transmission, because it is off the shelf, and two, when that video system does drop, if you were to go two and a half kilometers and it does drop, yep. what are the other options that you have with your whole flight system? Because I know we talked yep. briefly last about time fail about, about uh, fail-safes and about um, waypoints and, and, and right. that stuff. So right now I'm using Alpha and EH Wi-Fi cards. Uh, you can use a lot of different cards, but I chose the NEH ones because they're powerful and they natively support all the necessary features. That's connected to a Raspberry Pi Zero, and uh, it's running DroneBridge, which is the firmware. Fully open source, not mine, but it's on GitHub. Okay, so the firmware actually goes on the, the Raspberry Pi, not yes. on the radio, because the radio is right. just a client radio. Right. So is it my understanding then that this isn't just traditional Wi-Fi? Yeah, uh, so I'm doing, or it's doing packet injection. The cards are in monitor mode rather than access point client, and that's a function of the drone bridge firmware. Okay, so you don't have to worry about associations, clear to send, control <laughs> frames, management frames. Exactly, that's all overhead. It adds latency. Uh, you might be able to get it under a second and uh, under normal circumstances, but that's still way too much to be useful. But it's still sharing the same frequencies and right. channels that regular Wi-Fi operates on. So I'm assuming it's at a place up, like DefCon. A best it is vertical. It's bad. What are you getting right here? So right here, nothing because I have it shut off. But uh, here I've given, been getting about 600 to 800 kilobits per second. But it is. Is that the, enough to fly? It can be. Uh, it's very choppy though because people are stepping all over it with the authors. And yeah. does it reduce the frame rate in addition to the video yes. quality? Yes. It will both reduce bit rate and then frame rate. It takes bit rate first down to a point and then you'll start dropping frames. So if you set it up and you say, I, I have a mission profile where I want to, whether it's land or loiter mm -hmm. around a specific area, the camera is really there if you've pre-programmed this flight path is there as an assurance to you as the pilot where it is yes, exactly. and that you've hit your mark. Yep. Right. I see that you have a gimbal here on the camera now. Uh, this could be really useful and just like pointed point it down and looking it's down stabilized. At the ground. And you can say like okay, that's the campus that I'm auditing the Wi-Fi on, on <laughs> or or whatever have right. you depending on the mission profile for your pen test. Mm -hmm. um, tell me uh, what do you use to program that and how important is the video signal at that point? So iNav is the flight control software. That's running on the flight controller, and then the Raspberry Pi is separate to that. Uh, and you can use a number of different ground station softwares. I am working with Q Ground Control, and that lets you set waypoints, that lets you set fail-safe mode so that if you lose signal, uh, radio signal, yeah. it will come back. That's not video signal, that's separate, but you can do that. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> you can program a complete mission to have it take off, fly to any number of locations, I think up to like 256 locations, uh, waypoints, and then it can, will return on that path. And you could have it land at your destination if you're fairly confident there's, that there's no obstructions on the ground. Yeah. But that's in theory anyway. That is so cool. And so you mentioned that you can put in those fail safes in case it loses the signal of the radio. I see you did have a different radio here today. Yes, uh, I picked this up relatively recently and it's a uh, FR Sky x Lite, And it serves a couple different functions. Uh -huh. And uh, I prefer the form factor because I can just toss it in my bag, whereas the other radio, it was a bit large. I see it also runs OpenTX. Yes. So tell me about OpenTX. Why is that important? Uh, it lets me, it's very open. It lets you change everything you could possibly want. 
Uh, this specific radio has internal and external antennas, as well as the option for even uh, more powerful modules in the back. Oh, that's cool. So I see here there's, this is the, uh, what, what is it, just a regular uh, RP-SMA? Uh, it might, might actually be SMA. Well, it might no. be SMA, but in any event, I, I never you can put another straight. antenna on yep. here. And yeah. uh, on the top here, you actually have sliders. So I can control the gimbal. I don't have it set up yet. Uh, yeah. I was in a bit of a rush. But you can control the uh, gimbal pan and tilt. Okay, so that you could look down on your targets, right. whatever's below you. Right. That is really cool. Um, the other cool function is it has a USB port in here, mm -hmm. and that is actually also a simulator port. Right. So I can plug that simulator. I can play flight simulators. Yeah, as you talk might expect. to me about that because people keep asking us like, what's mm -hmm. the best way to get into drones? And I'm like, I don't fly, fly a hub down, like get a flight cheap, simulators cheap help. drone and crash. What do you do? I have something like. Well, I started off doing that, cheap drones. Yeah. Uh, I made a lot of mistakes. Failure is uh, more important than success in a lot of ways. Uh, when you get your hours in, yeah. Right. <laughs> so uh, flight simulators help because you can. it's free to crash. Yeah. Once you've paid for the game, you can crash, crash, crash all you want. Uh, and I've been playing specifically uh, Drone Racing League. Uh, and it's also cool because you can you know, race against others. You have that motivating factor, not just to fly yeah. you know, in a video game, but it's a competition, so you want to get better. Is this, is this, the, uh, is this the software I saw your sick video of you flying yeah. around a 747? <laughs> yeah, diving through empty engine nacelles. That was sick. That was hilarious. Yeah. Uh, cool, well, I'm glad to get a recommendation on that. So if somebody wants to build this now, yeah. uh, and, and you know, because I know that we talked about this last time, you have all the build instructions I know on your website. Do you have the updates here if you want to like upgrade yours and and I will be posting those to, soon. To, oh, is this necessary as well? We didn't talk about that. So first, this is a uh, digital data link. It is the ground uh, station. Oh. Now everything coming from the drone goes to this module. That lets you plug it into phones, tablets, uh, uh, desktop computers. It runs telemetry. It runs the video signal. It runs everything. What's inside the box? There is a Pi Zero, uh, just like this, as well as an NEH card, again, just like this. I also have a lithium battery in here, charge circuitry, and a boost converter. There's some LEDs for status. Nice. And uh, yeah, you just got your antenna there. I can't wait to see what's oh. inside. That is brilliant. And it does USB tethering to the device, and it can also do Wi Fi as well as HDMI out. And if I had a second HDMI port or USB port, I could plug a flash drive in and record directly to that. that so is it's so cool. basically a uh, uh, DVR in and of itself. Wow. And so this is to receive not just the video link, right. but also telemetry. Right. To and that's all over one, one radio. So you don't have three, four different radios for everything. It's all over one major link. And you can even run this through it with the simulator port. But I tend to keep it separate because if I lose this link, I still have RC control. And that's so, very important because yes. you know, with, with the, uh, the FAA rules and such, right. You need to maintain line of sight and anyway, all of that. Yeah. So, yeah, why why risk it? But uh, it's still very cool. This also, it's hit and miss right now, but this also does support encryption. That's something that's very lacking in the drone indus industry right now is any semblance of RF security. You know, it, and it's only a matter of time before, I mean, we've, We've joked around doing yep. like cute tricks Someone's on steal toys. Someone's going to steal Amazon drone, and suddenly they get a pizza and a drone. Right. <laughs> we did one on the uh, the the, the pair of AR drones yep. where you SSH in or Telnet in, and you just kill the thing. Exactly. And that's that's cute, but that, that was like a, that's a toy. Yeah. You know, it's a much different thing when you're talking about a beast like this that can literally be used for legitimate pen testing. Exactly. When you're authorized to do a full Wi-Fi audit. So you're and, expecting. Hey, uh, contention. You're expecting someone to push back. And what's cool about this is there's a lot of places that just you as a human being cannot easily get exactly. to. And so I love that, yeah, it's cute to like life imitate there is art some imitate practical life, but there's practical there. stuff. There. Exactly. Yeah. So where can people follow along and learn uh, all of the tips and tricks to upgrade so their own? I have a Google. website at glitch.tech. I have a Twitter account at glitchtech. And I also have a uh, YouTube channel, youtube.com slash glitch. That's awesome. So, Dude, thank you so much for coming thank back you. on. I love to see the evolution of this, and I can't wait to see where it goes next. So, of course, follow Glitch on YouTube, and for more coverage from DEF CON 26, stay tuned to Hack 5. What, no trust or techno lust? Domain.com has all your website needs, from .com and .net domains to intuitive website builders, so you can take that first step in creating your online identity. Let me tell you, there's no domain extension like a .com or a .net, or if you want to brand yourself, Domain.com has over 300 domain extensions like .club and .space, 
These guys are huge fans of Hack5. They're affordable, reliable. We've been using them for years. They've got all the tools you need to share your ideas with the world. And because they're such big fans, they are hooking you up with 15% off their already affordable prices. So get domain names and web hosting and email, and just be sure to use that coupon code HAK5. So when you think domain names, think domain.com. Do I need to do a jig so it can be at the end of the video like last time?